Yo, what's up world? Michael here. And this bad boy is War Machine. So War Machine is a PC that I personally built to take on deep learning and reinforcement learning tasks. Before building my own machine, I actually wanted to buy a pre-built machine because I didn't want to go through the trouble of having to build your own PC. I found a couple of companies that sold these type of machines, which are Lambda Labs and Bison Tech. They have really good machines. I really, really, really like their machines but I don't like their prices. So I thought, hey, I have a computer science degree. Uh, how about I try and build my own? Can't be too hard, right? It turns out it's actually not that hard. There are a lot of reliable resources online on how to build a PC. What I found lacking are resources on how to properly build your own deep learning rig. So in this video, I wanna talk about everything I learned on how to build your own deep learning machine. Towards the end of this video, I wanna talk about the pros and cons of training on your own personal machine versus training on the cloud. So some requirements for me when building War Machine was I wanted something beefy. So that means a ton of CPU cores and as many GPUs as possible. I wanted to maximize my dollar because I wanted to ball on a budget. War Machine is inspired by the products sold at Lambda Labs. The parts reflect Lambda Lab parts, but the prices do not reflect Lambda Lab prices. Currently, War Machine has 12 cores, 24 threads, an NVIDIA RTX 280 Ti, and 32 gigs of RAM. It will be expandable to have four GPUs and 128 gigs of RAM. AI training rigs require particular parts, so let's walk through the different components. So at the heart of training deep learning models is the GPU. GPUs are super fast at computing deep learning algorithms. Unlike CPUs with a very small amount of complex cores to do complex tasks, uh, GPU have hundreds or even thousands of simple cores that are super efficient at doing matrix multiplication which is perfect for deep learning. The most reliable brand for deep learning is NVIDIA cards. Um, that's because NVIDIA has something called a CUDA SDK, which is just a software library to interface with their GPUs. When picking out a GPU to get the most bang out of your buck, you wanna pick a GPU with something called tensor cores. So tensor cores are something NVIDIA invented that are just specialized processing units to do specialized matrix math. If your GPU has tensor cores, then it will enable you to utilize mixed precision or half precision training. So mixed precision and half precision allows you to do bigger batch sizes, uh, faster training and bigger models. At the time of making this video, tensor cores can be found in the NVIDIA RTX models. I'm pretty sure all future models after that should have tensor cores as well. So one of the most important things when getting a GPU is the GPU memory. Any amount of memory you need for your GPUs is actually dependent on the models you train on. If you only want to train models for embedded devices, which are smaller models, then you can probably get away with a GPU with less memory. But if you plan on training big models like in the NLP domain, let's say BERT or GPT, then you'll want as much memory as possible. Having more memory open up doors to, you guess it, bigger batch sizes, faster training, and bigger models. Also, if you plan on doing a multi-GPU setup like me, Make sure you choose GPUs with blower style fans. So a big mistake when building a multi-GPU setup is not getting blower style fans. Blower style fans expel heat outside of your case, so it's very important for temperature management. I've seen a lot of threads online on GPU throttling due to overheating of your GPU because in a multi-GPU setup, they don't have blower style fans. For War Machine, I went with an NVIDIA RTX 280 Ti from ASUS. It has 11 gigs of memory and blower style fans. I plan on buying three more GPUs when, you know, my YouTube blows up. Okay, so that's it for the GPUs. To sum it all up, make sure you have sufficient memory for your use case, um, blower style fans if you want to do a multi-GPU setup, and tensor cores, you know, for the best bang for your buck. Now let's talk about the CPU. So War Machine is equipped with an Intel i9-10920X, which has 12 cores and 24 threads. It also has a clock speed of up to 4.8 gigahertz. CPUs are mainly used for data loading and deep learning. The more threads on the CPU means that your training script can load more data in parallel. So this is actually really useful when you train on big batch sizes because then your GPU doesn't have to wait for your data. CPUs are also super important when you want to get into reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, most of your computation is done in your learning environment. So you want to have a big enough CPU to tackle that task. Also in reinforcement learning, if you decide to use large neural networks, Works, then a GPU will also help. If you're only planning on doing deep learning though, then the most important thing for your CPU is to make sure it's compatible with however many GPUs you want. So when choosing a CPU, ask yourself these questions. Do you plan on doing reinforcement learning? 
then you need a beefy CPU to train faster. Do you only want to do deep learning? Then you can get away with a smaller CPU, but just remember that more threads you have on a CPU than the faster the data loading. Do you plan on having a multi GPU setup? Then make sure your CPU is compatible with however many GPUs you plan on having. So I end up going with Intel, but I heard a lot of good things about the AMDs as well. AMD are a better bang for your buck, so I understand why you would choose that option. My Intel i9-10920X is a very capable CPU of doing both deep learning and reinforcement learning, so it works out and perfect for my needs. Now let's talk RAM. A huge mistake that people make when choosing RAM is trying to get one with a high clock speed. High RAM clock speed is like a marketing gimmick best explained by Linus Tech Tips in this video. In deep learning, a higher clock speed on your RAM has negligible improvement, so you're better spending your money elsewhere. What's actually more important is the amount of memory you have on your RAM. You want to make sure you have a minimum of as much RAM as you do your GPU memory. I went with a Corsair brand that has a clock speed of 2,666 megahertz and 32 gigs of RAM. When the war machine is complete, I plan on maxing out my RAM at 128 gigs because, you know, I'm extra like that. Okay, on to the motherboard. When choosing a motherboard, make sure you have enough PCIe slots for however many GPUs you want. Also, make sure your PCIe slots have enough space to fit your GPUs. Each GPU generally takes about two space of the PCIe slots. So War Machine is equipped with an X299 Sage motherboard. I chose this motherboard because it has support for four GPUs and it also support my CPU of choice. The only thing I wish it has is onboard Wi-Fi, but I mean, I connect with the Ethernet cable anyway, so it works out. Let's move on to your storage. For storage, there are two important things. One, you need to make sure you have enough space for all the data and the models. And two, you want something fast if you want faster data loading. For storage, if you want to optimize your data loading speed, you'll want something fast like a solid state drive. Solid state drives are more expensive than standard hard drives, so it might be helpful to buy two drives, one SSD and one standard hard drive. You can use the SSD for the main OS and also any data of interest that you plan on training on. And then you can use the slower standard drive for long-term data storage and long-term model storage. War Machine is equipped with an MBME Samsung 970 EVO SSD. The SSD has one terabyte of storage. For the second drive, War Machine has an eight terabyte standard hard drive from Seagate. Okay, now on to the PSU or the power supply unit. For the PSU, you want something with enough wattage to support your entire system. A good rule of thumb is to take the required wattage for your CPU and all of your GPUs, add those together, and then multiply by 110%. That should give you a general amount of how much wattage you need for your entire system. Make sure your PSU has enough PCEI slots for all of your GPUs. War Machine is equipped with a 1600 watt PSU from Rosewill. Even though I don't need all that watch now because I only have a single GPU, I will need all of it when I complete my set, so I bought it for future proofing. Okay, let's talk about cooling your system. You'll for sure need a CPU cooler, so to reduce fan noise, I recommend buying a water cooler. Also, if you have the budget, you can also look into water cooling your GPUs. Water cooling your GPUs would make for a super quiet system. If you stick to air cooling GPUs, just make sure you have the blower style if you plan on doing a multi-GPU setup. War Machine is currently equipped with a Corsair H115i Pro, which is a water cooler for the CPU. For the GPU, I just have the standard blower style fans. Okay, now for the case. For the case, this is pretty much just up to style, so choose whatever looks good to you, but make sure all the parts fit. Since I'm extra cautious on all this money I spent, I went with a case with a lot of airflow so my components don't overheat. I went with a Corsair 540 ATX case. It has ample airflow. I think it looks pretty cool and it's the exact case that Lambda Labs uses. So, okay, when shopping for parts, I use a tool called PC Part Picker. PC Part Picker has this feature where it checks for parts compatibility when you're building your rig so you know you don't screw up. It's not perfect though because when I was putting all this together, it told me that my case is not compatible because the parts won't fit. But I purchased it anyways because these parts were similar to what Lambda Labs were using and they managed to fit everything inside the case. I still recommend it. Use it as a compass so you can feel confident on the parts you purchase. Okay, at the end, my training rig cost me a little over $3,000, which is still a lot of money. 
but it's a very versatile and capable machine, so I shouldn't have any issue tackling most deep learning problems. Once I purchased my three extra GPUs, the entire build would cost me around $7,000, which is still about $4,000 cheaper than what you can get at Lambda Labs. Okay, now many of you may be curious, why build my own training grid? Can't I just use the cloud and pay per use? Well, yes, yes you can, but there are benefits to training on your own machine. Number one, cost savings. If you frequently use your GPU for training, then training on your own machine can actually save you money long term. If you're renting a V100 from AWS, that's about $3 an hour. If you constantly train for the entire month, it's going to add up to about $2,100 a month. You can build your own machine with that money and use it forever. Number two, it's faster to train on your own machine. Your hardware is actually faster than the cloud. That's because the cloud suffer from slow I.O. because of all the virtualizations. The cloud uses a bunch of abstractions and virtualizations to optimize their own hardware, but that causes slowdowns when you're training deep learning models. Bison Tech did some research with training on the cloud versus training on your own hardware, and they found that cheap consumer hardware trains almost just as fast as the top cloud GPU you can get. Now, there are other free GPU options like Google Collab or Kaggle. But you're limited on the time you're able to use those GPUs, so then your options are narrowed down when you want to start an experiment. I do highly recommend you using them for most people starting out on deep learning though. Okay, so that's the guide on how to build your own AI training machine. If you found this helpful, and if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. Do you have experience building your own machine? Let me know your experience in the comments below. Alright peeps, see you later, and as always, thanks for watching.